What's up, guys? This is Showtime's Fight Forum. I'm your host, Showtime. Thank you guys for tuning in. Please make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like, comment, all that good stuff. Follow me on social media at Showtime Sanders. This is your first time watching. Thank you. Hope you enjoy. Um, so today's talk is going to be about something I'm so excited for, which is UFC 162. Specifically speaking, Michael Chandler and Charles Dubronx Oliveira. Woo! I am like, like, guys. When I tell you I am excited for this fight, I am excited. Why? Because these are two of like my favorite fighters, especially Charles Oliveira. He's been one of my favorite fighters since he's been in the UFC. Since he was pretty much 21 years old, um, the youngest dude on the roster coming out, I'm like, this dude is great. Like, he has talent, man. Like, this guy's gonna be world champion, and now he has his opportunity to be world champion. Ah, man, I, I, I'm, I can't explain in words how excited I am for not just him, but also Michael Chandler, who is one of the greatest fighters to ever come out of Bellator and uh, who was a former lightweight champion, who now is getting his shot to show that he's good enough to be in the UFC and to be UFC champion as well. It's, it's going to be crazy. I'm excited. Uh, I'm so excited. I brought my use case shirt because that's like my favorite character ever. So one of my favorite fighters from one of my favorite characters had to throw that out there. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm just, woo, I'm, I'm hyped. So I'm going to first talk about that fight, but then I also want to do Tony Ferguson and Benel Doriush because that's a fight that's going to be fire as well. I'm so excited for that fight too. Um, but first, like I said, we're here for the main event. Let's talk about the main event. Michael Chandler, simple and plain. He's 22 and 5. He is, like I said before, the former lightweight champion before he losing to Patricio. And once again, that's he's literally, Patricio's great. So that's nothing. There's no slack in losing to him. Wish I, I did wish that there was going to be a rematch, though, because I was like, why are they not fighting again? But it was Bellator's mishaps. Now he's in the UFC, and now he has a chance. He has 17 finishes out of his 22 victories. 17 finishes. That's phenomenal. But out of those, 13 of those have been in the first round. That kind of tells you something. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, but let's, let's break down his actual game. Michael Chan is a power puncher. He called himself Iron Mike, you know, obviously Mike Tyson. In reality, he's a, a, a kind of a version of that. Like, he does have one knock, one punch knockout power. He has stunned pretty much everybody he's fought except for Pitbull. Um, you don't want to get punched by him, simple and plain. His pressure is ridiculous. He will be in your face. He comes to fight every single time. I've never seen a time where he doesn't come to fight, even the fights that he's lost. He's come to fight. Um, so, yes, and he's a, obviously we know he's a great wrestler. If you don't know, he's a great wrestler. He's an All-American at Missouri. Um, he has good rear naked chokes, great pace. I mean, in reality, like, I'm not going to say he's the perfect fighter, but he has very few weaknesses, realistically. Um, he's just short. I mean, I mean, if that could be a weakness, he's short. I don't know what else to tell you, but he's very, very good. Um, Charles Oliveira. Now, his, his, his life in the UFC, he pretty much grew up in the UFC. Like I said, he's been in the UFC for almost a decade. He has the most submissions ever in the UFC. And that's saying a lot. Let's not like 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 slide past that. Like that's not like a, a, a that's like a small feat. Damian Maya has been in the UFC forever. Frank Mir was in the UFC forever. But no, 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 no. Charles Oliveira has the most submissions, and it's, let's not also act like he has it. Like he's just always submitted like bad fighters. He submitted very good fighters as well. And Tony Ferguson is very very lucky that he wasn't one of the fighters that he submitted. Let's be realistic. If it was any other hu regular human being. They would have tapped with that arm bar, but Tony Ferguson is Tony Ferguson, so we we know he's not. You have to literally break his arm. Um, but yeah, like I said, he's been on an eight fight win streak. Um, he's had some downs, man. He's had some bad um losses. Uh, he's been knocked out. He's been choked out. But man, he always comes to fight too. Great pace, great wrestling, great jujitsu. I mean, like my only flaw with him was always like his mental. Like, he's just like, bro, are you lazy? Are you tired? Like, are you just not tough? Like, that was always my issue with him. It, it never was a skill thing. Skill-wise, he can fight literally anybody. Doesn't matter who in a lightweight division you want to put him up, up, put him up against. He can fight anybody and be competitive. Um, so now when it comes to these two fighting each other, one thing I could tell you, this fight is going to be fun. This will not be a boring fight. It's not possible. It can't. And granted, people say that, but knock on wood, it's going to be boring. No, I, I'm guaranteeing you guys this fight will be fun for how long it lasts. Why? Both guys love to love to walk forward. These guys are both aggressive strikers. They're both good on the ground. Now, on the feet, I will say Charles Oliveira has a well-rounded game, whereas in Mike Chandler, he's more of a, you know, boxer. He does throw leg kicks, but in reality, he's setting you up to throw that big right hand. 
or uh, Big Left Hand. It's, it's, it's mainly his go-to. It's, that's all he has to offer. Charles Oliveira, he has everything, man. He has kicks. He has knees, Muay Thai, punches, kicks. Like, what do you need from him in the stand-up game? He can offer elbows. It doesn't matter. He's more well-versed. He's, that's, that's his game. Um, so, I mean, and also not to mention, he is the bigger, the taller fighter. Uh, Michael Chandler, he looks like he's like 5'5". Five, five. Whereas in Charles Oliveira, it's probably like 5'10", five, 5'11". Five, like, the guy is very tall. He he fights tall as well. Um, I do. I actually think he has a better chin than people would give him credit for. I do think he wears a lot of shots well. Like, the Frankie Edgar Ward, like, bro, he was eating shots. Like, I mean, Anthony Pettis, he was lighting him up. He was able to survive. So, I mean, like I said, he's a lot tougher than... I'm even giving him credit for, but at times, like I said, he does, you know, say, hey, this hurts. I'm going to lose. Uh, rather than literally, you're going to have to kill me. That That's always been my issue. On the ground, though, that's where it's probably the most interesting. And it's still going to be fun on the ground. Like I said before, Michael Chandler has strong takedowns. He loves slams, which wastes a lot of energy. And he also loves power doubles. Whereas in Oliveira, he can take you down different ways. He's a, He has strong body locks. He can also slam you. He's good with trips. He can also do the doubles. Um, but his his work is normally on his back. You take him down, good luck. All right? I'm not going to sit here and say it's impossible because people have submitted him, and people ha- and Paul Felder has TKO'd him while Charles Oliveira was on his back. But it's so risky because Paul Felder almost got, like, submitted. Like, it's it's – Jim Miller did get submitted. Like, people get submitted normally when they take him down. Kevin Lee got submitted. Tony Ferguson got lucky that he didn't get submitted. Like, it, it's very, very difficult to be on the ground with him. He's just so wiry. He's so tricky. He's so smooth. Like, it's 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 bad. So, I mean, I do think Michael Chandler will take him down just because I think he believes that he's a dominant wrestler and he can, you know, take him down and be able to nullify his, uh, t- his, uh, his guard. We will see. I don't think that's the smartest way to go. If I'm Michael Chandler, I probably want to keep it on my feet and chest and test that chin. But, you know, once again, you do want to mix it up with Charles. You don't want to just keep it on the feet. Um, one thing I will say about Michael Chandler as well is that I don't believe he has the greatest cardio. And that's not to say that he gasses out, but he does get tired and he does slow down. His punches don't wear on you like they did in the first round, which is obviously a big issue. I've never seen Charles Oliveira in the fifth round, so I don't know how he's going to be in the fifth round. But I've seen him in three-round fights, and I've seen him be fine. Uh, whereas in Michael Chandler, I've seen him fade miserably. And with the pressure that Charles Oliveira causes, it can very well he can very well wear him out. So um, if you ask Josh, how do I see this fight going with these two weaknesses and their strengths, I think that the first round is going to obviously tell everything. And if it goes past the first round, I think, without a doubt, Charles Oliveira is going to win. I think that it will be... Uh, a submission. I think it might be a rear naked choke in the third round. I think he's going to wear on Michael Chandler. I think that he's going to wear him out. And then eventually either he's going to get desperate and shoot where it's not going to really end well for him and it's going to end with a choke. Or Charles Oliver is going to catch him with something. It's going to be a kick or a hook and it's going to rock him. He's going to get on top. He's going to choke him out with the rear naked choke. Um, Like I said, but it all depends on that first round because one thing that I can guarantee you which will be Michael Chandler will land a heavy shot to his jaw. He will. He will. Now, how Charles, Charles Oliveira reacts to that first time he does it is going to tell me everything about the fight. If he clips him and Charles Oliveira takes it and then continues to march forward, bad night for Michael Chandler. But obviously, if he hurts him, it's going to be a short night and Michael Chandler is going to be in new. Um, but I'm super excited for this fight. I definitely want you guys to tell me what you think, how you think this fight's going to go, who you think is going to win. Um, I'm going to next bring up Tony Ferguson and Benel Doriush, and then that's going to pretty much be it for my 162 breakdown. I was going to do Caitlin and Vivian fight, but here's my thing. They both going to get their ass whooped if they fight on Valentina. So why do we really care? Like, genuinely, do I care? No. I don't. Good luck to these ladies. I hope you have a fun fight. But neither one of y'all want that work with Valentina because Valentina's just going to demolish y'all. She's already done it with um, Caitlyn anyways, but that's just, you know, goes beyond the point. Uh, Edson Barbosa versus Shane Burgos is going to be a fun fight. I'm so excited for that. Shane Burgos should get that W. I see Shane Burgos honestly knocking him out. He's a madman. He is psychotic. Granted, Edson Barbosa could hurt him with a body shot, but I see uh, Shane Burgos KOing him with a nasty hook. Can't wait to see it. But the fight that I really also want to talk about is the Tony Ferguson fight. Tony Ferguson, everybody's calling washed. I don't believe that he's washed yet. This fight will tell me if he is washed. He is 0-2. He lost to Gaethje and Oliveira, who I believe are the best in the world. It's not, you're not washed for losing to the best in the world. You're, you're washed if you lose to Benel Duryush. And that's not me saying 
Benel's not bad. I mean, he's bad. He's not bad. He's very good. But there's levels to this. Benel is good, but he's not up to the... I don't believe that he's a top three candidate. I don't think he's elite. I think he's just very, very good. Um, to me, Benel reminds me of a Gengar Musasi. A worse version of that, though. I'm not going to say... Because Gengar is very, very good. I mean, I, I'm not going to say... But he's very he's elite, in my opinion. But when I say Gengar, I'm saying like he's very like lazy. Sometimes they seem like they don't really care too much. But they can knock you the hell out. They have good submissions. They have good wrestling. Like, there's not really a weakness... Sometimes it's just a lack of effort, like or lack of care. Sometimes with Benel, I'll be like, bro, do you not care when you throw punches, bro? Do you not? You know you're gonna get punched, right? His defense not necessarily there for me. It's it's a very winnable fight for Tony, and uh, I think Tony. Once again, if Tony loses this fight, I think we can officially say Tony's no longer elite. He's not good. But if Tony looks like how I expect Tony to look, and I expect Tony to win by TKO, honestly, uh, by the second round then I, I don't know what the hell we're talking about. Tony Ferguson is still elite, and we need to treat him as such. Um, he's just had two bad, showing, two bad showings versus elite competition. Benel, once again, he's on a six-fight win streak, so he's hot. He's hot, man. And, um, you know, his last win was a split decision, but he won. I thought he won. I don't really think it was a split decision, but it was close-ish, I guess. But I definitely think we know who the winner was. But I'm excited for this. Once again, this fight is going to be fun because neither one of these guys are boring fighters. They're going to move forward. They will throw punches. They will throw kicks. They will take each other down. Their ground game is going to be fun. But I do think Tony's going to break them. I think Tony's going to wear on them. He's going to make them tired. He's going to press them. And then that's where I think the TKO is going to come in. Maybe it might be a submission. Who knows? But I say it's going to be a TKO. Uh, but tell me, guys, what you think uh, about this card. Are you excited for this card like me? I'm excited. But, you know, once again, tell me who your fight predictions. That's what I really care about. Who you putting your money on? Charles, or are you putting it on Oliveira Dubron? So we're going to have we gonna have an and new regardless. But thank you guys for tuning in. Once again, comment, all that good stuff. This is Josh. Be blessed.